Hey, it's Rick Kettner here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about Traction by Gabriel Weinberg and Justin Maris. This book is ideal if you're starting a new business, you're launching a new product or service, or if you have an existing business and you're just looking for ways to attract more customers. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how to build and grow your business, then I recommend that you subscribe to the channel here on YouTube and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. But Let's get into it. I wanna cover three of my favorite insights from this book, and a little bit later in the video, we'll probably talk about who this book is ideal for and if it's the right book for you. Now, insight number one from the book is focus on marketing right from day one. This is something that I talk about a lot here on the channel because it's incredibly important that we take time to focus on marketing right from the very beginning of our business. I know as entrepreneurs, especially if you're involved in actually creating or conceiving of the product idea, it's incredibly tempting to focus all of your energy on building out the product, coming up with the brand name, and getting everything ready, and then treating marketing as an afterthought, something that you do after the product is ready. But the fact is, the number one reason why most businesses fail is they fail to attract customers. They often bring a product to market, but they fail to actually attract enough customers to the product. So it's really important not only to focus on marketing right from day one, but I like the way that they focus on and emphasize in the book, splitting your time 50-50 between these two responsibilities. A, focused on the product and everything to do with building out the product and service, and then B, always be thinking about marketing and your long-term strategy. Everything from who is your ideal customer to how you can actually get in front of them, the marketing channels that you would use, and also finding ways early in the process to get in touch with potential customers to get their feedback, to get their opinions, and to make sure that you're moving your product in the right direction. Because the last thing that you wanna do is spend a small fortune, a bunch of time, energy, and money on building something only to find out that either nobody's interested or that the product is not as tailored to the customers out there as it could be. So it's really, really important not just to Focus on marketing from the beginning, but to actually split your time evenly between the two and treat marketing as a core fundamental aspect of your business and to really emphasize that. And one other thing I just wanted to mention, and I've talked about this here on the channel, but it's really important. As you're talking with early customers, not only do you wanna be paying close attention to what they like about the product and trying to emphasize those features as you continue to iterate the product, but you also wanna focus on the language that they use when talking about their problems, challenges, frustrations, or whatever it is that you're helping resolve with your product. And you also wanna see how they talk about your product and how they describe it to, back to you and perhaps to other people that might be in on the conversation. Because ultimately, when it comes time to put together your marketing, you wanna use their words, you wanna speak their language rather than trying to educate them on how you talk about the product. So it's very important to do that. Okay, insight number two, find the most effective marketing channel. This is another thing that I talk about quite a bit here on the channel. And specifically, I reference the bullseye framework, which comes from this book. This is a four-step process that you can use to select and execute on the best marketing opportunities for your business. And this is really, really important because in the grand scheme of things, all the different marketing channels out there, there might be a handful, three or four, that are far better than the rest. And in fact, there might be one channel that is far more effective than two, three, and four combined. So it's really important that you do what you you can to identify the best marketing opportunity for your business. And the bullseye framework, it's something that I reference, like I say, often here on the channel, it's a four-step process. The first step is to brainstorm marketing ideas for all the different marketing channels out there that seem interesting to you. This book happens to cover 19 different marketing channels and it covers it in quite detail. Now, I also have put a video up on my channel here on YouTube that covers 33 different marketing channels that you can use to attract customers. It was inspired by this book and some other resources out there. And I don't go nearly as in depth and in, as in detail as this book. I just quickly recap 33 different strategies. So you'll definitely wanna still read this book if you want more detail on the 19 that they cover. But the idea here behind the first step in the bullseye framework is to Focus on each of these channels and pretend you live in an alternative universe where you have to use one specific channel. Work your way down the list and assume, okay, if I absolutely had to use this one channel, let's say hosting live events, how would you use that channel to promote your business? 
Spend 10, 20 minutes coming up with a realistic scenario of how you would use that specific channel and work your way down the list. Cover each and every channel that you can think of, or like I say, reference the video that I posted here on the channel covering 33 different marketing opportunities that you can pursue. Brainstorm them, not because you're gonna pursue all these channels at once, that would spread your efforts way too thin, but this is just an exploratory process. You just wanna see what you could come up with if you were forced to use any one of these channels, just as an exercise to brainstorm interesting ideas. Step two in the framework is to select three to five of the most promising options. Narrow down the list and really focus on the ones that seem most appropriate for your business. And the name of the game here is speed, especially if you're a startup business and you need to find the one channel is that's gonna be hyper effective for your business. You wanna find the channel that can attract customers quickly, that can attract customers profitably and ideally enough customers to actually make an impact for you with your business. So select three to five of the most promising and then you move to step three, which is perform inexpensive tests. And this is the step that it's incredibly easy to skip over as an entrepreneur. I know myself, it's really tempting to just look at the list and say, okay, here are three or four that seem promising. I'll figure that out later. I'm gonna go back to focusing on the product. But the reality is if we don't test the marketing channels, A, we don't know if they're really gonna work and if we're actually gonna be able to attract customers and B, we can't actually identify which is the best opportunity. So the idea here is to perform inexpensive tests Depending on the size of your project, that might be 500 bucks, that might be $1,000 per channel. And let's say one of the channels was running a Facebook ad campaign. Well, you would perform an inexpensive campaign, test it over a few days, and the main thing you're trying to identify is A, are there enough customers to make things interesting and to be worth your time? And B, trying to get a sense of, are you confident that you could make this a profitable marketing channel if you were to focus on optimizing it, improving your ad copy, improving your website or landing page, and just optimizing the whole marketing funnel in general. So you don't wanna obsess about optimization here, you just wanna get a sense of, are there enough customers? And if you were to spend more time and energy optimizing things, is it likely that you could be profitable in converting those prospects into customers. So that's step three. Step four is pretty simple. You look at all your tests and you choose the one most promising channel that seems best for your business. And this is very important because, especially as a startup, it's really important that you do not spread your efforts too thin, that you focus all of your time and energy and the time and energy of anybody else on your team around really mastering one marketing channel. This is a huge differentiator for businesses. If you can have a founder, a co-founder, or a lead marketer that is an absolute master at one marketing channel, it gives your business incredible strength and confidence. So as quickly as possible, once you've identified a really promising marketing opportunity, you wanna hone in on that and focus all of your time and energy on maximizing the potential of that channel. And eventually, once you hit diminishing returns or the point at which spending more time and energy wouldn't necessarily give you more results, you can pull away from that channel, leave your efforts as is, and restart the process and find the next marketing opportunity to expand your business. You still support the original channel and obviously you, you try not to exhaust it, but once you hit diminishing returns and it's not really worth ramping up your ad spend or ramping up your amount of time involved in trying to optimize it, then you find the next best marketing channel and restart the process. So this is a very powerful and simple framework that I refer to quite often here on the channel, but one of my favorite insights from the book and something that I strongly recommend that you use. Okay, insight number three. Identify your critical path and stick to it. The idea here, the, the critical path concept is you wanna identify where you are today and where you really need to be to feel much more confident about your business. This is especially important if you're in a startup because this is a life or death situation. You need to figure out, is your business gonna work or is it not gonna work? So you need to get really clear on what your traction goal is. What measurement, what metric do you have to achieve to know that your business is moving in the right direction? It might be based on revenue, might be based on total number of customers. If you're in a situation where you're taking on investor funding, it might be based on hitting some kind of a metric that indicates confidence to your investors that you're moving in the right direction. But at the end of the day, you wanna clearly define what your traction goal is, and then the critical path is the most direct route from where you are today to where you wanna be in the future. And the, the idea here is you identify your critical path and then you stick to it, you do not deviate. And what I mean by that is, as entrepreneurs, especially like I mentioned earlier, when we're involved and invested in creating the product, it's very tempting to build out things like vanity features. Features that we wanna build, that we like to engineer, we wanna create and add into the product, but don't necessarily move the needle forward for our business. 
And so if there are features like this, or if there are activities or projects or anything else, any other waste in the business, things that are being done that do not take you along the line to where you need to be, you need to strip those things away. And often here on the channel, I talk about how you don't want to overly obsess about metrics. And generally in business, that's very true. But when you're a brand new startup, it's very important because this is a life or death situation for the business as a whole, that you're hyper-focused on getting to that point where the business is more stable, maybe it's cash flow neutral, maybe it's cash flow positive, maybe you can hire that extra person that you're desperately needing to take the business to the next level. Whatever it is, you need to get super clear, not only for yourself in terms of leadership, but with the entire team, and you need to collectively hold each other accountable to focus all of your time and energy on getting to that traction goal to closing the distance and actually getting to that next level. This is incredibly important, especially for startups. So if that's your situation, if you're starting a new business, get very clear on where you need to be in order to take your business to the next level and to have that extra level of confidence and then avoid any waste. Typical things that slip through are things like trying to over-optimize the business, over-process map it. So for example, trying to create processes for everything that you're accomplishing and trying to make sure that you're future-proofing the business None of that stuff matters when you're just trying to figure out, does this business even work? So super important idea and one of my favorite takeaways, favorite insights from the book. Let me quickly recap the three things. So number one, focus on marketing right from day one. Number two, find the most effective marketing channel. And number three, identify your critical path and stick to it. And those are just three of my favorite insights from the book. There are a lot more things in the book. I didn't even talk about the 19 different traction channels. I focused on the different frameworks and concepts because for me personally, having some experience with the various marketing channels, I found that stuff more interesting. But for you, the 19 different marketing channels might be as important or if not more important in terms of the value of this book. So definitely check this out. If you're starting a new business, if you're launching a new product or service, or if you've got an existing business and you're just looking for ways to attract even more customers. Quick note, there are at least two different books by the same title. There's the book by Gino Wickman, and then of course there's this book. Both are very good books, but obviously if you're wanting to learn more about what we're talking about here, you want the one by Gabriel Weinberg and Justin Mares. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button down below to let me know. It also helps promote the video to other people here on YouTube. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about how to build and grow your business, then I recommend that you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. And if you have any questions about this book or if you have recommendations for other books that you think I, that I should be covering in future videos, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. And otherwise, thank you for watching the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.